it's Denisha and today we will go through my painting process for this huge canvas and what are some steps I had to take to overcome my fear of failing at art and finally getting into my flow state. to work on this thrifted canvas I started in my previous video I don't know I woke up with an inspiration to do it so yeah we'll see how much we can actually get done In my previous video, I recorded the beginning of this painting and as I mentioned, although I was excited to start painting, I was still nervous and scared to create something this large. I kept thinking, what if it turns out bad and I ruin this? But I told myself to at least just start. Just start this one corner and later we'll see what we can do. The next day, I came back to my painting with a lot of expectation that I will keep adding all these details and keep making it look good and exactly how I planned it. But again, as soon as I picked up my paintbrush, I was scared because of all the things I told myself I would do. And then I started thinking, how did I do it before? How did I enjoy this? Wait, I think I just answered my own question. I enjoyed. I enjoyed the process without thinking how it should look in the end. And that's what expectation was doing to me. It was stunting me and making me forget to enjoy the process. Enjoy just having the paintbrush glide on the canvas and see the colors slowly come to life. So just like Salvador Dali said, I realized that I can't really reach perfection. Because if I could, then this would be my last painting and I would not have anything else to learn in life. And with that, I again shed these expectations that were pulling me down and I was free to stop painting just to paint. At this point, I spent around 5 hours working for this painting and I know I needed a break. Just to have my eyes stare at something different for a bit and breathe some fresh air. Even with being aware of the expectations I had set before and trying to get rid of them, fear was starting to creep back out. So I took a break to walk in nature for a bit and try to understand what I was feeling. And I realized that I actually felt the next part of the painting a bit daunting to continue. I had a lot of grass and surface area to cover and I don't think I was prepared for it. So let's get prepared.
you can actually use this. from the art store and I got a couple art supplies to help me finish up this painting. So the first one I got is this paintbrush. I love it <laughs> because it's just so long. Um, I'm so happy to have that. I just couldn't stop myself from buying it and I think it's a pretty decent size to paint over a larger scale. Um, this is what I was struggling on in the beginning, so hopefully with having this paintbrush now, I'm able to paint a larger scale and have more fun with the painting process. And also these two paintbrush, I just couldn't stop myself from getting it. So this one is a small square brush. I just like the way it was and it wasn't too long because right now what I'm struggling on is that the acrylic paint just tends to stick into the paintbrush and it doesn't go as much on my canvas so hopefully having a shorter bristle would help with that and then this one was just kind of like <laughs> a purchase on impulse well not on impulse it's just if you look into this type of brush the back of it is pointed and you can actually use that in your painting process and the final one is i actually got a acrylic retardant um, I think that's how you call it. It's basically to slow down the drying time of my acrylic. I want to be able to use that since I'm painting on a larger canvas and I don't want my paint on my palette to dry <laughs> before I get to use them. So that's the purpose of this one. So as you can see, I took some time to analyze and figure out what was bugging me. And yes, the end was fearful, but I wanted to create a space and have all the proper tools I needed to tackle the rest. And proper tools can be anything from supplies to a happy mindset as well. So now that I had a larger paintbrush and a retarder to give me additional time to work for the process, I was set for success, right? Wrong. Let's see what happens in a bit. No matter how prepared you can be, it's also important to listen to your body. For me, since I've been painting on a smaller scale for a while, I was getting close to a specific kind of fatigue, creative fatigue. And because of past experiences, I knew it was time for me to take a longer break. I actually couldn't see the colors as well, and you can tell by the painting at this point that there was no details coming through. Plus, I knew from my sketchbook painting that drawing those little cabins would be harder for me on a larger scale. So, I actually decided to walk out again and spend a longer time in my garden. And I actually came back the next day to continue the painting even though I am wearing the same outfit. I did that because I didn't want to think about a different outfit and cause decision fatigue on top of trying to let my brain rest. So once I was fully rested, I was intuitively pulled back into the painting to complete the rest of the details.
I hope that you enjoyed this painting. It was definitely a larger painting that I usually do, but with time, I'm learning to manage the way I approach this. And of course, I could keep adding more and more details, but I think for today, we are done here. And I will not try to make it look perfect as this is not the end goal. The goal is to enjoy the process and keep learning. Happy painting, my friends, and I'll see you very soon.